Ibrahim Rasul has experienced a lot in South African politics, a former Western Cape Premier and Ambassador to the United States. But skeptics have asked, what does he know about rugby? A lot, according to Rasul, who loved playing in the forwards mainly at lock, but at eighth man as well. Since I was a high school student, all I ever wanted to do was to play rugby and to play rugby for the old Sakos Western Province at that point. I played at schoolboy, I played juniors in Manenburg for Watsonias, I played rag for Kelly's on the Greenpoint track. Almost every Saturday I was either at City Park or the Greenpoint track, Athlone Stadium or Florida Park watching rugby, non-racial rugby. So that was where I come from until the UDF happened. That was the end of my playing days in 1983. Rasul says that there's a lot of challenges that lie ahead for Western Province and Stormers rugby, but feels his experience in the field of economics and that the contacts he has built locally and overseas will hopefully help him to make a positive and powerful contribution to rugby in the Western Cape. And so I take this as an honour because it remains that but it's also a challenge that I want to rise to and maybe some of my international experience and management experience in the Western Cape could help me um, to reimagine rugby after COVID-19. The new chairman of Western Province Rugby said the 95 Rugby World Cup win was great for national unity and so was the win in 2007. But the 2019 World Cup win was so important to break the myth that black players make rugby teams weaker. From one non-white in 95 to a team that was so transformed and even internally transformed between African and colored was an enormous moment in rugby terms, but a enormous destruction of a myth that the more representative your team is, the weaker it becomes. I think what Rassi had been able to do was to look at who are the players, not what colour are the players, who are the players, what are their unique contributions and styles they bring to the team, and then to not try to play New Zealand rugby or England rugby. Questions have also been asked about Rasul and his affiliation to the ANC and with the potential conflict of bringing politics into sport. Look, rugby has always been politicised. Um, that was from the time that Danny Craven tried to pick the All Black team without Maoris, from the time that Foster tried to pick the English cricket team without Oliveira, right to the time that Hassan Hawa very importantly said no normal sport in an abnormal society and laid down the principle for non-racialism, right to the time that the ANC invited rugby and said to them, we will let you play again in 92, right to the time that players today have a debate about taking the knee for Black Lives Matter. So you can't remove it. But that is the politics with a big P. Politics with a small P, whether I belong to the ANC or not. I take with a pinch of salt the suggestions that I'm an ANC heavyweight, when people have tolerated my predecessor, who's a DA heavyweight, he's on the maker of the city of Cape Town. So the fact of the matter is, don't raise questions now that you haven't had the guts to raise or the honesty to raise before. The former Locke says he has been spending more time cultivating other skills like lecturing. And since being the South African ambassador to the United States, he wants to use his experience and talents in other fields. While many of the old guard, including certain segments of the media, might want Rasul to fail, Western Province and Stormers Rugby will be hoping that he will take them to new heights in a changing world after COVID-19. Craig Murray, SABC News, Cape Town.